Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a Beyond the Summit presentation of the Red Bull ECL. Of course, I'm Luminous, joined by Blitz. What's up, buddy? What is up? Is that DK? If we, I think they might got re... they got kidnapped and they got replaced them by some Western players because last game they did Tree and OD. This game they have Wisp as their first pick. So if we go into the draft, the bands are pretty customary. We have Darkster and Lifesteal on one side and Bat on the Alchemist on the other. But Wisp first opening pick, I don't think DK even thought about that one. They're like, oh, Wisp in the pool, let's select it, and that seems Western to me. Yep. And Wisp is a hero that doesn't need to be paired with anything in particular. I know a lot of people like that Wisp-CK combination, mm -hmm. but LGD International especially has shown that that's not a necessity at all. I think just the fact that he helps you to move your heroes uh, around the map, give your team split push, give your team uh, the ability to do three, four smoke ganks, and more importantly, I think a lot of the underrated ability is that it prevents ganks going to some of your teammates, as long as your Wisp and your carry or whoever it's ready to join in. So I feel like this hero is absolutely bonkers. And uh, good to see the Chinese team are definitely respecting it. We do see him being basically first banned. And if you don't first ban him, well, DK will pick him up. Now, the problem with Wisp is that it takes a ton of time to learn to play with the hero. And let's see if DK is uh, ready to use this hero to its truest potential. Yeah, a few times we saw it, it was kind of just sloppy in general. Right. You didn't really see him being utilized too well by the Chinese teams. And I think that was more just a product of them not being familiar or comfortable with it, not just not playing it enough, more than anything. And but hopefully DK has kind of figured it out. Obviously, they value it really highly. Not picking the tree like they did last game and picking the Wisp instead. And I think Wisp actually, if utilized correctly, is like the offensive hero of the decade. Well, I'm not sure about decade, but uh, now Siren's gonna get banned out. As there are some teams that sometimes do use Storm Siren as a way to slow down the Wisp. What What do you think is the best way to actually tackle the Wisp? Do you Disruptor. beat him in lane? Disruptor? Okay. You, you just send somebody back. Do you send a Wisp app or you send whoever he TP's in? If you can kill whoever you know he TP'd in with and you do that, otherwise just you send his partner back instantly and then uh, you just kind of camp behind people with Disruptor. Use the glimpse, send people back. Not many teams have actually been trying that at all. I, I don't even see teams drafting it and, and just trying the hero. Disruptor, not exactly a bad hero per se, especially in teamfight. He's actually decent against Magnus, so... Hmm. Who knows if LG Gaming will have a disruptor in them, but I really haven't seen them to travel outside of their small hero pool, so I don't expect a disruptor from them. It's just a fun hero in general, too. Yeah. The big thing, too, about playing against Wisp is if you give up a bunch of towers early, then it makes it difficult for your team to TP in and help you. And so that kind of creates chaos where Wisp can kind of TP in without any help. But at the same time, teams are getting really good about playing against Wisp, you know, staying smoked behind one guy, baiting him out. Yep. Waiting for the Wisp to go on that, so that's something that uh, they really have to look for. Yeah, also DK has been showing that they love to pick ROTK a Bounty Hunter. And this just remind this. I think Wisp and Bounty Hunter, not exactly a combo like CK Wisp, but I, I think these two heroes kind of work in conjunction so well, because Bounty Hunter gives you so much sight and so much more chasing power. Uh, now the Tether is going to be a big deal as well. Now they even put, na put Nature's Prophet alongside of the Wisp. This d dual global combo, we've seen... a basically hundreds of time now by Chinese teams and well, we'll see whether it's going to be effective this game. We're going to see Visage being selected once again. This time I like it a little bit more because it's not a blind Visage pick. It seems like they're thinking to go offensive trialing. A Fissure into a Gyro Rocket Barrage into a Soul Assumption. That's pretty deadly and I think this is going to be offensive trialing. Or maybe even pick up, um, I know LGD likes picking up the Windrunner. And maybe you do the Windrunner uh, Visage or Shaker combination which sure, is really sure. strong. And just leave Siler up alone the top. Because Gyrocopter is a really good one-on-one -on -one here, especially with Black Cannon. Yeah, I feel like LG Gaming definitely has a ton of options to go. Meanwhile, DK perhaps maybe stretching themselves somewhat too thin. We said that last time about their draft, but... Eh, I, I think they choose Rough is okay. Wisp is definitely a little bit weaker during the lane stage. But at the same time, sometimes it's really hard to kill the Wisp if he knows what he's doing. Like if he stays very far away from his allies and then tether to them, that's a free escape spell for him. Yes, definitely. And Nature's Prophet being picked up as well. That's like the ultimate global team. You know, you've got three heroes instantly wherever you are. Right. They need, uh, I'm just going to say, they need Bounty or they need Storm. Something like that. Uh, and this is going to be Fnatic EU. <laughs> Although I don't think uh, Fnatic EU will pick, Mag pick Magnus here, but it's all good. 
Yeah, Bounty Hunter is a really big Fnatic EU hero, but let's see what's going to come up next. And in terms of uh, supports that, you know, DK really, they need at least one more support, and I'd assume they need their hard carry. What do you think it's going to be for a hard carry? We've got, we've seen LGD International pick the Luna. There's a CK, there's a Tiny. Uh, a Phantom Assassin is pretty common as well. Um, I, I don't think they will pick PA. It's just a hero that DK haven't used before. Um, I would say... It's not really a Flash Farmer either. That's not one of yeah. those burning heroes. I actually think Weaver is just fine. Weaver Wisp. Just kind of go in, tether, apply a couple of stuns. Maybe not too exceptionally good against heroes like Earthshaker with a long range. But, no, they are going to go with Tiny. So, this is a combo that at least MMY has been playing quite a bit back in TI2. Let's see if Burning is going to have what it takes to play that combo as well. It's very, very different from your traditional kind of AFK Bricers. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. Who do you pick alongside with this? Do you pick your Bouncy? Um, no, you can't, I guess, because uh, the Nature Prophet's going to take the offlane role. So it's going to be maybe Jakiro, maybe Lina, somebody of that nature. Yeah, there's also Shadow Demon. It's a really good hero to pick up. Especially for like all the BKB heroes that LGD is going for, especially since that ultimate, the purge yep, does yep. go through the BKB. It's definitely good against the trialing situation that LG likes to do, right? It's mostly yeah. single target. Fissure, Whoever gets fissured, you just kind of uh, you so, disrupt them. Yep, and then they should be fine. So yeah, I, I like that pickup. Uh, we'll, we'll see whether that's what they go, go for. One thing I am somewhat concerned about is that Tiny's early game armor value isn't particularly too high. So it's very easy for your gyrocopter, your visage definitely to kind of Shoot a couple of harass at Tiny, and he might have difficulty keeping up in the lane. I'm assuming that LG Gaming is going uh, offensive trial lane, but it'll surprise me if they don't. Yes, and the tree's going to get banned this time. LGD says, we're not going to have any of that this game. And DK, with one more ban left to go, I'd imagine they're going to pick a, a ban that would either go in the short lane if uh, LGD decides to offensive trial lane. Oh, it is going to be Windrunner. So... And there you go, Bounty Hunter being picked up by LGD Gaming. Does himself. this mean that they're going to go defensive try lane again? I say you go offensive try lane and put your Bounty solo mid. Because you're laning against Magnus, right? That's a free you, lane. Your Bounty Hunter mid? Yeah, why the hell not? We, we well, definitely see... Why not see... DK mid? That, that works too. And put your Bounty on the on the safe lane farm. That is quite a strong try lane. Yeah. Or Shaker Gyro Visage. It, it comes in from far, you could challenge jungle fairly easily, not from the fact that they have good spells to clear creeps, but the fact that you actually can't get next to these heroes. Puck's going to be the final f uh, pick up here, so it is going to be a support nature's prophet. Or a support Magnus? I'm confused. How is this going to go? We've definitely seen Fluff and stuff pilot Magnus on the 4 row, and it's, it's going to be a QQQ Magnus. Well, all right. That's uh, skewer into standard stun. Well, maybe ROTK just. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what was happening here. But okay, Shao A is gonna be going on the solo mid as a bounty hunter, so that's what I like to see. And Stylar, either him or Yao is gonna be playing on the one row. I I reckon that one row is gonna be uh, handled by Dragonite, or maybe Shao is gonna play the offlane. If that makes a lot more sense here. And then Silar, DD, and DDC is going to be a particular trialing. Yeah, very interesting. No, QQQ is playing Puck? What's going on here? And they're going to go WC. Doesn't this land have a rule about WC? What's WC? Washing closet. Or the bathroom. Oh. Or the loo. Is there a rule against that? They're in a land. Wow, that was... Do you... Well, maybe he was going during the uh Oh, okay. Alright. I was going to say, did he wash his hands? But uh, hopefully he did. Alright, let's weird. quickly introduce the players. So it's going to be MOY playing on the Wisp. We have Super going to be going back on the mid lane of Magnus. Uh, ROTK on the Puck, so off lane Puck. Burning is going to be your t uh, tiny player. And QQQ is going to be playing support. Nature's Prophet. So, Wait, offensive tiny, tiny Wisp. Offensive Tiny Wisp, ROTK... Oh, no, 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 no. They're doing pull on the mid lane. Wisp is going to be pulling the level 1 creeps. And then Tiny, off lane, solo. I think they're expecting an offensive trialing, and they do expect it correctly. So if they get a shout 8 1v1 matchup, Tiny versus Bounty, Tiny wins that one. I think. I think. He should, right? 
It's okay because you do so much base damage on Tiny. 67. Yep. But, I mean, Shao 8 can trade really effectively with uh, Shadow Walk and Janata. And that's like the one scary thing. Right, he's got tangles up to Wazu as well. Of course, on the bot lane here, if you're in, uh, you're pug against this offensive trial lane, that's probably the best hero you can have in this game to survive. But let's quickly introduce the LGD lineup as well. Xiao A is going to be playing the Bounty Hunter. We have DDC playing Visage. And of course, Silar playing Gyrocopter with DD on the Earthshaker. And last but not least, Yao solo mid Dragonite. So it might have been LGD uh, doing a fine job scouting this one out. So it's going to be a matchup that I think favors. LGD quite a bit. 1v1, I think Xiaowe, he should rush a poor man shield, and once he gets it, he will beat uh, our TK fairly easily in my opinion. And now with the offensive dual lane top, defensive dual lane top for Burning and uh, MMY, they, they can't beat this rally. It's not even close. Okay, it looks like DK is just like, well, we got outpicked for lanes. Yeah, they got outpicked hard. So now they're gonna just rotate. They have to. I mean, the wit. I. It looked like Burning was like, okay, let's try this. No, there's yeah. actually no way in hell this is gonna work. Yeah, because you. I mean, Wisp is not gonna out harass anybody with the zero armor. ROTK is he gonna buy a teleport score and go back top? Like ROTK is gonna have a very very tough time. If he was in a safe lane, maybe he could get some experience. He in the off lane, he just gets zoned out by support. So they're gonna run a tri lane, and featuring a puck. Now puck's now rotating. This is just really awkward. In fact, he may be going for a solo kill. Tenberg and Xiao Wei just cannot get around here for the tether stun. Uh, but doing quite a bit of harass against Xiao Wei. Xiao Wei should be fine though. Again, still want to get back to that poor man show. Yep, and the creep wave is going to push out like crazy now. As Xiao Wei is going to get a lot of free creeps here. And just a lot of indecision coming out of the way of um, DK. Yeah, it's just a very awkward situation here. And I think DK is getting all of the poor trades. Back on the top lane here, Silo is getting absolute free farm, and the rotation now comes. It's an offensive trialing featuring the bounty under. Uh, wow, I really like this. Just forcing them to kind of run around the map. Wisp isn't one of those heroes that is like that lane dominator. Mm -hmm. You kind of need a free lane where you can kind of pull and stack, but MMY having none of that. Yeah, and they're trying to D ward. That D ward is, I think, successfully pulled off. No, this this one is going to be still blocking, so they need to find another sentry. MMY. And burning, staying on this bot lane, but not getting too much farm as a result. In a 1v1 up top, I think RTK will also lose that 1v1 engagement. Man, Gyrocopter is such an OP hero. Like, he just beats almost everybody in a straight up 1v1 situation. Yeah, RTK more than holding his own, though. He's had quite a rough start, and things are going to be a little bit difficult for him, but at the same time, this I is mean, a lot better than putting the uh, the Wisp and the Tiny against that offensive right, 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 lane. Right. But at the point right now, he's down by like nine CS. Like that's not even counting the deny. So yeah, that's I just that lane swap though that went into it. Yeah, that's just really unfortunate. I mean, Shao A in this lane, he's gonna be pick up Janata or not Janata. Uh, we can toss a three four five. Normally, I'm not a big fan of it, but in this particular lane, when you are actually procking up a so so assumption damage, it might not be too bad. Fissure, thinking about it, thinking about it. Oh, the Fissure's gonna come on the wrong side. Uh, that was a little bit of uh. Or poor Fissure from DD. I mean, he even got slow by DDC, so. Oh, yeah, no reason for that to happen. If he had actually been able to get the Fissure off, I think they... They get that kill. It would have been close. Because the Wisp is right there, you can... Uh, well, he would have definitely got the J Janata hit and a level 1 Shuriken toss off, so. Who knows? Who knows? There's a Courage just parked on the mid lane getting ready to bottle crow here. And yeah, it seems like he had an invis... Or a double that Or a regenerate. Jesus. It's okay, Lumi. The eighth okay. time's the charm. As Gyro being able to farm up a storm right now, and LGD's kind of just had the better of the, of uh, the lanes in general. Yeah, every single lane is I want to say favorite to them. I think maybe the mid lane's a little bit more of a wash, but Super doing eh, relatively okay, only down by three CS on the bot. Again, everybody's got to be very careful. If they fissure MMY, MMY probably would be dead. I think they're thinking about a tower dive. These creeps are tanking it, but burning is fairly help help effective. Healthy in terms of HP. You gotta be very careful. If you get Avalanche stun into a Tether stun into a toss under that tower, you're dead. It's quite easy. QQQ now checking for the rune. Uh, Would not find it, but here comes Super. Super might actually give him uh, something to worry about. You do see the rotation coming in from Xiao Wei. Xiao Wei should just focus in the lane and get level 6 because turns into a different hero when he has it. Man, MMY is so good at like last hitting for once under the tower for burning. Like he's done this before. And definitely did, uh, can't tell if it's casting, but, uh, did, did, did do it all day during the TI2 as 
that was the only way that it seems like Ehome was able to win any game back in TI2. Yeah. Uh, and, and DD managed just kind of staying in the force right now. It's kind of scary though because LGD isn't actually getting any kills at this point. But they are getting the better end of the CSing deal at least. And ROTK or uh, Xiao Wei just had the time of his life right now. Do they need to get kills? They're going to fissure right on MMY. MMY is going to tether to the left side and kind of peace out there. Yep. So he's actually got overcharge already too. Somewhat surprised. Maybe he thinks he's going to overcharge and help his tiny to survive. That's not a bad, uh, bad thing to think about. Spirit's going to get used here, but yeah. Just kind of a wash in this lane. Not a whole lot in terms of death, but at the same time, oh, and make and MMY, looks like he is going to go down. Yep. So much damage and is actually burning. A, no, another Miss Fissure. If that Fissure had hit, uh, connected across the line on the other side, that would be a dead burning as well. Yep. Well, Fissure is a one of those spells that maybe if you don't play enough, you do miss a couple of the early ones. But, uh... Yeah, and this is uncharacteristic of DD, making a mistake like that, not just once but twice now. Because both those should have been kills, but at the same time, they do manage to get the kill on the Wisp. Xiaoid has had almost absolute free farm in this lane, so a worthy trade in general, still. Yeah, I mean, you're free farming a, a bounty. I, I feel like... Oh, a top. ROTK gonna go on Silar, but Silar actually TPs. Just... I don't think he needed to do that. Yeah, I'm not ROTK sure. ROTK had like 130 HP, and Silar had like 330. He could have just walked up, eaten a tree, and he had a four-charge right stick. Yeah, yeah, just right I think he was fine. Yeah, and now I, I think Puck may have actually won the lane because they both basically get a free trip back home. Or Puck gets a free trip back home since now uh, Silar got a free trip back home. I don't think home. he won the lane, man. It's 30 CS to 32. Well, he's, he's done better than you think he would. Yeah. He, he's not even supposed to get that much. He's not even supposed to zone Silar out of the lane, and he did, so. You consider that a win. You've got low standards, Lumi. If, if you do okay on the matchup that you're supposed to lose, I consider that a win. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But Xiao Wei able to pick, farm up a storm. He's actually on top of the leaderboard in CS right now, with the mag right behind him, and but the gyro uh, right behind that as well, and the dragon knight doing so well as well. I mean, these trades have just really, really favored LGD. Yep, and LGD now leading by 1,000 gold. MMY is trying to pull himself up to some experience, but here comes the bounty hunter, just being ever the annoying beast. Prevents the stack, prevents the pull. Now gonna block the camp to the south. RTK yeah, super actually at right. top right now. Kind of ran up here with haste, not able to accomplish a whole lot though. He did have RP available, so I think I like this mindset, trying to settle a gank, but didn't do too much. Now we're gonna see Earthshaker now walking slowly back top, making that rotation. Very, very, very slow start. And if you're DK, you gotta be happy, right? That's more time for you to farm your Wisp. Or do you think, hey man, once the Mountain Hunter has that track, suddenly the game gets very dangerous? What What is your mindset if you're LGD right now? Mm, just continue to play this game. We're winning all the lanes right now, and then as soon as uh, Shao Wei feels comfortable. Start rotating him like crazy. Well, Shao A is level five and a half. He's gonna hit level six after this big patch of creeps. Does have a teleport score available? Yao levels eight. Gotta be very careful if you are on the other side of the hill, a super, because suddenly you can have a bounty under teleporting in, and uh, you can also have you know the range stun coming out from Dragonite. And Tread's gonna be picked up on Dragonite right now. That's the item of choice for Yao. And it looks like they're just kind of uh, positioning and posturing for this rune, but DD going to be there. Try to save it down. Super actually not contesting it. Maybe realizing that uh, it's a little bit dangerous, but not a big rune to give up. Oh. It's just an illusion. Prophet thinks about taking that one for free, but seems like Yao already got here. So, yeah, QQQ's had a rough time of it, too. He's uh, He started out in the jungle, and it doesn't look like he's getting anywhere close to this, uh, this hand of Midas. This is like a 10-12 minute hand of Midas at this rate. That's, uh, I don't want to say that's standard time. Generally, even with uh, Prophet going for boots first, uh, before even the Midas rush, generally gets around 8 or 9 minutes. So I think he is somewhat falling behind. Yes, but Super's having a good time mid. That's like the one lone bright spot for DK right now. Super's a uh, superlative play. Superlative. Uh, no. no. I think that's a little bit too superfluous. Ah, uh, uh. <laughs> so, we gonna walk in mid, doesn't accomplish a whole lot. I don't know why he actually left bottom like this. But Burning is only level 5, hasn't had the best time. I mean, look at his items. I mean, Burning is gonna find farm. It depends on what build he wants to go for. Like, if he picks up Arcane Boots, he could just basically play the Flash Farm. Just use that Arcane Boots as an investment of sorts. But 
It doesn't seem like that's the case. He's gone bottle. He's looking to get a little bit more aggressive once that Wisp hits level 6. And speaking of that Wisp, he's doing okay. He's actually pulling back and forth, back and forth. Gonna get, uh, unfortunately, not able to tunnel through to the left, though. Yes. And a game like this, I think, favors LGD, especially since they have the, uh, they have Silar playing the gyrocopter. They have a bunch of defensive heroes with uh, Earthshaker, Visage, you know, you have a lot of counter initiate, and you've got Track Gold. Right. So one good fight, and it kind of just goes in LGD's favor. Like, the entire game swings around. And for once, again, the team with Bounty Hunter actually does have a uh, counter push Radiant's in the form of tower. Earthshaker Fissures, Flat Cannon, and Flame Breath. That's enough AoE. But they're thinking about setting up, up a gank on the bot lane. The Smoke Party is uh, coming in in the form of Visage, as well as Earthshaker. The problem with ganking with 3 4 these kind of more melee based heroes is that they will have time to not eat Avalanche in the face. <laughs> they will have. Fair enough, but. Yeah. Or RP in the face, that's definitely a concern. Yep. Or a skewer in the face, yeah. Lots of skewers. I've actually haven't seen Super Play Mag before. Maybe uh, it's just because I don't cast enough of his games? Maybe. I've, I don't remember actually seeing him play it, and if he does, it. Didn't remember to be a very impressive. Most of the time, one. I pick him, see him pick like those team fight ones, but I'd actually prefer it. But at bottom, yep. it looks like MMI is just gonna get blown up and burning, has to run away, and he's had such a rough go of it. And the guy who's supposed to be protecting him just keeps dying. I mean, if you have a wisp protecting your tiny, like, that's there's something's wrong, right? Like, you're not actually protecting anything. Now, LGD rotates on the volley, trying to get a tower push. We have Dragon Form back up in about nine seconds. And I, they're definitely going to get that tier 1 tower. Meanwhile, they're protecting the tier 1 tower mid by using a glyph, but soon we're going to see a teleportation back to the mid lane. In fact, it's going to come in here in the form of a bounty hunter as well as a TP to tier 2. Calldown's going to use and they will draw everybody off that tower. Well, successfully defended. There's so much farm right now on the side of uh, LGD. Yas picked up um, his Ogre Club at 11 minutes, so doing quite well for himself. And I think. The same can be said of Silar. He's got 1,100 gold, depending on what he decides to go for. DD's got his boots. Um, DDC has his boots, and he's got 1,200 gold on top of that. So he's doing just fine this game. Advantage LDG. Did I say that right? LDG? No, that's not right. <laughs> I was like, LGD. Wow, Advantage. I was like, I was like, this feels wrong, inherently wrong. Here comes LGD threatening to do some. Uh... Ganks in the jungle, though the Radiant is quite somewhat prepared for it. It is level s nope, not level 6 yet. I saw MMY and Tiny Teddy together, it's like, oh, level 6 time. Not happened just yet. But yeah. I feel like the Dire is playing somewhat overly defensive. Yeah, they can play a little more aggressively, especially because every time they see MMY on the map, they can kill him. But well, opting to just go for towers instead. Maybe just kind of push uh, lane after lane with this. You, you, you might be a little bit of trouble here. We'll drop the Wrath of God here as I'm not sure how he got there in the first place, but yeah, he needs some ally support. And yeah, he should be just fine. Being forced Radiant's out, though, tower, it's going to make it really tower. difficult for them um, to get anything going here as DD just kind of waiting for somebody to get fissured in the back lines. And Yao, no ulti for another 20 seconds, Dyer's but should be able to push this passively attack. as nobody's really in position on the side of DK yet to defend this tower. tower yeah, that tower should be uh, brought down fairly quickly, although without Dragon Form, it takes quite a bit of time here. A couple of Super's actually going to wait on top of this cliff. I think they're actually going to go for this. And Oh wow, RP's going to get used right now. It's going to be a two-man RP. The Puck's going to come in. Fortunately, Puck's going to orb into the front. Drops the Junko. Yao's going to try to TP out. And even if he didn't die to orb, he'll die to the tether break. And ROTK down to about half HP. Nice and favor. And going to go on here. I don't think this was the best idea, but Xiaowei going to come in from behind. Wow. MMY does it, but Silar dies as well. No way that was worth it. I mean, Silar just... Okay, so he goes in, and then he goes in. <laughs> right. I mean, now Tower's gonna get Radiant's denied on the mid lane here. Our DK wins a humongous team fight, and that was off the back of not even a blink dagger. Now Super has it. Did he just skewer from high ground or low ground? I guess. Yeah, he just went on top. He was waiting on top of that cliff. It was perfect setup. And the tower mid's gonna be taken by Burning, especially who needs that desperately. And actually, DDC is gonna get trapped out here. A little bit of indecision on the way of uh, DK though, as they're just gonna back out. There's no way that Silo should have just gone in like that though. Yeah, definitely. A he drops the ult, and then he kind of continues to walk in. He's like, how deep can I get into this? <laughs> Not deep enough, unfortunately.
So Xiaowei not able to get a whole lot of track kills. I I mean, did you see? I think he might have gotten an MMY with track. Definitely got one uh, or two maybe, but nothing else to Oh, at bottom lane, much. Burning's got a dust. Uh-oh. Xiaowei has to be careful here. He doesn't have any magic stick charges at all. Furion's going to come in as well. Or Nature's Prophet, excuse me. The Wisp Balls and the Nature's Prophet Ultimate should be enough to kill him. Yep, and they do. Link from Super scaring the hell out of me. I thought that was the enemy team's link, but that's cool. RTK now pressuring and pushing uh, mid lane, working towards his own blink dagger. Yeah, I like Burning too. He went for the phase boots. He's like, well, I'm not going to get a whole lot of farms, so let's just get kills here and try to catch up this way. I really agree with that decision of his. I thought phase was pretty standard on Tiny in the first place. Oh, it is. But, I mean, some people get treads if you have a wisp on your team. Right. Because um, if you get phase and you run too far away from your wisp, that's not a good thing, Lumi. Right. And you have a ton of move speed anyways with this. But, you know, just opting to go and fight instead of farming this game, I really enjoy that out of Burning. And Tiny's one of those heroes too that, you know, once you get one or two core items, you're just supposed to fight non-stop. Yeah, he hasn't this, been able to farm anything considering his start. This entire lineup is pretty good at fighting. Puck is going to have his Bling Dagger in about 40 gold. Of course, Tiny, definitely a good uh, hero to fight early and often. So, LGD is going to scope things out, maybe looking for a track or two before backing off. This is almost suicidal mission. Yes, and actually I thought Siler would be a lot more farmed. Judging by the start he had, I thought he was going to do a lot better, but not doing too well with um, the kind of start he had, especially since he was essentially against a solo puck that oh. wasn't there for the first wave. Oh, ROTK might be a little bit trouble. Solo assumption will fire off from long range and get that kill. Very nicely. Yeah, not able to survive there, and the worst thing is he doesn't have a blink dagger. Yeah, he was a tw he was literally a two thousand one hundred and like thirty something gold when he would start jungling, and well, that's kind of unfortunate. At top, Siler has to be worried about this. Ooh, Cardon's gonna get used. We do have a TP in coming in from the Nature's Prophet. Gotta be very careful. QQ about to actually go down. Track him up. Track him up. There's no track here on Shawit. Track is on cooldown. Not too sure what that was about. Yeah. I think they should have uh, been able to get the track kill, but Silar, what a dodge on that stun. His entire team rotates over and a free kill on the Nature's Prophet. Yep. Nature's Prophet put a semi RRTK TP's behind the counter. And uh Somebody has to do it, man. Oh, tiny now Tetra looking to relocate. Relocate is back up online. Get hype, LD says, as this is determining who's going to be in the finals against Orange. Yep. And what a close game it is so far. LGD being able to take the first one, DK evens it up with a dominant win. And LGD, like I said, man, these guys five, man. Well, they are trying to five men against a CK, or not CK, a Tiny Wisp. And the beauty of this particular lineup is that if you jump in with RP, if you jump in a Drinkoi, the relocate will come back and start just owning everybody. Yeah, Super is tracked up, and Flat Cannon is hitting him and stopping him, and Xiaowei just kind of being annoying and throwing shurikens at him. Well, Tower is going to deny, so a ton of more time being bought here for DK. In fact, they're going to make it go. Oh, is this going to go, but RP, RP that's gonna goes three. off. Skewer goes back here into a silence to the orb. Oh my goodness, the Koro goes out to relocate RP. And this is a massacre. Oh and I think DDC is actually going to go down as well. Yep, Burning's yeah. going to be able to catch up to him, and I think this is an entire team wipe. Oh, man. That is a full flat-out team wipe. DK using Wisp so damn well, but to me, it's Super's Blink RP. Super? Okay, the first game, maybe he cost his team the game, but he brought them into that game in the first play with, he played with well that, that Farming game. Alchemist. That second game with that Obsidian Destroyer goes absolutely bonkers, and this game, getting that Blink RP, he was tracked. He was getting hit by Flak. While he got that RP off, he was tracked, so I think that was LGD's fail just as much as it was his good play. ROTK following up perfectly, landing all three spells, and then that Wisp Tether TP in. Just absolutely flawless play from DK. Combination after combination. Yeah, it's also the way that LGD is playing. They're clumping very hard. Also the fact that they're using Defrisure to initiate. I, I feel like it's good to do that during the lane stage. Maybe not so much during the actual team fights. You want a really long range, reliable stun to blob it on the enemy. And they didn't have it there. Uh, so, quite unfortunate. Yeah, but Burning's caught up in a big way now. He's got a point booster and 1600 gold on top of that. Gonna go straight for that Aghanim Scepter. Oh, oh and Dragon Yao actually gonna go in. Is, does this mean the death of Burning? MMY doesn't have a TP up. He's gonna go down and Burning should go shortly after this. Nice. Tries to go on Silar, but... There had to have been at least one track kill, right? 
Yep, definitely. I think it's multiple track kills now, up to like three or four. Yeah. But DK gonna retaliate, take this bottom tower, and super so farmed right now. He's got an ogre club. If he decides to go for that BKB, he's like right there. He's like a thousand gold off. DK doesn't look like they're gonna stop because they know the wisp uh, the wisp tiny can just TP in, and a lot was used at uh, that top lane. DK ult I think is now down. DK ult. Or it's gonna be in a bit. Yeah, DK ult's down. The birds are down for quite a bit. So, well, I think LGD is. Uh... A little bit of trouble here. Yeah, and Yao gonna be spotted out. He's gonna get gone on. No BKB on him. He's gonna get sprouted. Super walks up, but he doesn't have an. He actually doesn't have an RP. Oh my and he's God. gonna skewer into that uh, that gyrocopter ultimate. And Burning comes in, but MMY looks like he's gonna go down. Is he? Uh -oh. One oh. second left. Oh wow, that was close. In fact, are they gonna chase for a little bit more? There's just no track to keep track of that wisp, and uh, she TP's back in wherever she came from. Yes, an ROTK able to kind of just walk out of there and, I mean, super, he had no mana, wasn't able to get that RP off, he was just an inch off that and then doesn't skewer farther enough, or farther enough, further, no, further, further far enough, far enough. I don't know why that you're, took me like six times to do that. You're pulling a Lumi right now. Yeah. I think it's okay for DK to maybe whiff a fight once or, two, once or twice because even though... They lost that fight. They didn't lose any more, right? They didn't lose a tier two. They didn't lose a Roshan. Yeah, and whereas Burning any, was actually able to get out as well. Right. Whereas actually, any fight they win right now, it's gonna be straight up easy tower. So, uh, DK Burning working towards an acceptor, or is already two, uh, three out of four away there. So shall I again tracking people looking for some kills. You definitely want to track the Wisp. I'm surprised that he didn't go for it. Because knowing where the Wisp is. Pretty important. They're gonna go on burning. The fridge is gonna come through. Any kind of tether relocate? No, no. I just out of uh, cooldown on that one. So wisp, I never care. Save uh, burning, and I have no idea why burning was up to here. Yeah, that was really far considering none of his teammates were there. Yep, dude. I never make as many grammatical errors as I do when I cast with you. It's like the Lumi effect. Yeah. It does all doesn't help that it's like 5 a.m. No, there's no way it's 5 a.m. It's 4 a.m. It's 3:34 a.m. and Actually, Wisp able to get a get, uh, kill with ROTK and QQQ up here atop against that Dragon Knight. And Yao needed to be stopped. And this is going to... I think this is going to be a tower. But, oh my god, LGD collapsing completely on top of DK. Uh oh, they're in big, big trouble right now. There's, There's one track on QQQ. Well, now you, you see the Magnus blinks back out. They want to have QQQ. He's going to try to TP out. The stun's going to come through. And, well, got to kill. That, to me, though, that was only a one-for-one -one trade for that tower. I'm not even sure whether it's worth it for LGD. Yeah, and they got out with the gem as well. They didn't lose any of their big heroes. I mean, it's like a four-core lineup right now on uh, on DK. Well, Burning's uh, keep on farming away. I really didn't like to go up top because I don't think Burning was ready during that particular instance. So you can't just randomly pull some dude in uh, for the relocate gang. So got to let him know. Got to let him know, man can't just do that to him. <laughs> okay, so Burning's getting really close to his Aghanim Scepter, and I think once that happens, they'll be pretty comfortable taking the fight. The cleave damage is so huge, being able to push towers as well. And with that, we're about 50 gold away from seeing the Aghanims on Burning. Wisp does tether to him, maybe just trying to keep him safe. Kind of pings him a to tell him. Back. He's fighting his Golem brothers. <laughs> Those Golems look so dumb. You can just tell, like, those are like the reject tinies. Yeah, they are. They're like, nope. They just didn't, like, they didn't, like, quite cut it. They, they have, like, no defining characteristics yeah, on their seriously. face. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, tiny's, like, a good-looking rock. As, like, good-looking as a rock can be. Whatever that is, a good-looking rock. I mean, like, you look at a mutt, like, a golem, and then you look at tiny, and you're like, that's a good-looking rock. Okay. Burning's got his Aghanims though, and we've got the Empower. That's so much cleave going on the way of uh, DK. Yeah, that's definitely a, a very full, very powerful farming force. Keep in mind that it does Empower does give you 50% more base damage. And when you're Tiny working with OP base damage, that's kind of insane if you think about it. Yeah. And LGD actually has two BKBs now. Yeah, BKB is... Uh, this is like their go time. They've got two BKBs right now on their side, and DK doesn't actually... They only have that uh, Magnus ult, and they're really relying on super, but the last hit denies. It, it just depends on whether the BKB gets popped off. I think 
you were just casting game number one when uh, I think it was not sideline. It was burning on Weaver. Where yeah, he when he was able to get it with like that half second. Right off. when he popped the BKB before the Magnus RP comes. In. Like you are gonna still get stunned. That doesn't get changed. But the fact that you block a ton of more magical damage, you block the avalanche, you block block the toss, you block all of, all of puck spells. So the BKB being activated is absolutely crucial. They are looking for some ganks right now. Unfortunately, they don't find too many. And it it you gotta be very careful of who you find. If you don't burst them down instantly, it's a relocate that's gonna come back, and you might be in trouble yourself. So. Meanwhile, DK Super is also smoked up. They're looking to get some counter smoke action. Yeah, QQQ getting kind of close to the sheep. He's got an ultimate orb, and you know, once you get an ultimate orb on Nature's Prophet, two seconds later you've got a. Well, maybe not two seconds later. Silence gonna get whiff here from ROTK. Not too sure what that's about. Of course, he had a gem, so you definitely seen that one coming. Track up from yeah. ROTK. ROTK is going to get tracked. He's played this game splendidly. Despite having such a hard lane, he's 2-1-8 and eight right now. He got the Blink Dagger at a reasonable time, and he's just been a force this game. Super picking up a BKB as well, and that's really going to help him as well, just not being able to get Fissured or, uh, you know, sure he can toss. Xiao Wei has done such a good job of just kind of being annoying with that. Yeah, Xiao Wei, I mean, he's got the BKB in drums. Uh, I, I, I like to see him go back to Vlad's a little bit later Is there on. three BKBs now? Let's quickly check. There is three BKB, and uh, I personally am not the absolute biggest favor of getting early BKB because that means that if the game goes pretty late, you have a little bit of trouble of keeping up your BKB charges. Yeah, but fresh. LGD is one of those teams that like to take those fights early. Oh, here comes uh, the. Ooh, he's gonna go right on MMY using the drums as well. He's gonna pop the BKB a little bit too slow. Joey, on that. You're taking My so God. much damage. You need to be careful. Well. That's a waste of BKB, and it actually didn't do anything. Are they, are they even going to relocate on that? They're getting the sight on him. No, they're not. But if he popped the BKB to, I guess, block the damage of that toss, they probably kill Wisp. Yeah, and ROTK, he's invisible right now. What are they actually aiming to do with this? Maybe waiting for somebody to TP out, and maybe ROTK tries to initiate? Maybe he thought the uh, Bounty Hunter is still nearby. Maybe he saw him ping around the area, but... He's being pinged like crazy. This is an ROTK play. He's going to go on this DD. Oh, here comes a relocate. The Fissure gets dropped a little bit too early. No, that was actually a TP. The relocate comes from the back. They're going to focus on DDC. Meanwhile, MMY is just on the run, popping the overcharge, losing a lot of HP. Echo Slam gets dropped here, but DD may be a little bit trouble. And RP going to come from RP. three. My god, and now Bernie's going to be cleaving away. The Sprout actually prevents Bernie from right clicking down to about a quarter HP. The Fissure comes in right now, and Bernie's actually going to go down. We talked about the BKB being the absolute key. If you BKB them when they actually drop the RP, it doesn't actually matter too much. QQ. Now on the run, the birds are chasing him down. The birds will prevent the TP back out. Drive by Midas. Will you die with the Midas on CD? That's not where you want to be. He's a Midas gamer, but not going to be able to get out. And a three-man RP landed. But like you said, two heroes able to pop that BKB. No damage coming the way of DK. I, the stun toss was already used, and Burning just kind of got ripped apart by that gyrocopter uh, rocket barrage. Mm -hmm. And it just goes back to saying, hey man, you could say that early game BKB, you have to use those charges pretty frequently, but that's why you get it, right? It's such an important tool here, and no other item have a similar in-game impact. I'm not sure whether Earthshaker died and bought back. It seemed like the case, but uh, in, in either case, LGD is going to take up Roshan off of this, and... I think you give it to Silar because he's definitely your, your run roll carry in this case. And it's very squishy and they do give it to him. But he's 1800 go away from finishing his butterfly. And that's big deal. That's really big I think deal. that was just a kind of bad dive by ROTK. He was pinging. He was like, I kind of want to go on this. But you knew their team was there half a second ago. And it's right by a tier 2 tower. That's so dangerous. Yeah, I think it's a different story if it's RP. Suddenly just jump out and over, grab 3. And then you just burst them down with all these AOE spells. Uh, instead, it's a puck that's jumping in, who does a very good job of keeping people on lockdown, but it doesn't do too much damage overall. Like, after his two nuke gets used, especially at this stage of the game, it's not going to just flat out kill people. Yeah, Burning actually going to go for uh, BKB, but look how slow his attack speed is too. Just not being able to get any uh, attack speed items like an AC on top of that. Actually, one thing I want to point out, we don't see the interaction way too much or at all. Is that Grave Chill eats tinies alive? If you look at Grave Chill, it does uh, apply a 64% damage rain at all levels. It is absolutely insane. So until BKB gets picked up on tiny, he is gonna be. Uh, 
He's gonna be that bird's female dog. Wow. Keeping MPG None too 13. subtle here at BTS. So MMY looks like he's gonna go for a BKB too, picking up an ogre club. I actually like to see something like a ghost scepter on him. Uh on who? MMY? Yeah. Maybe I think he's going for maybe Heaven's Albert. Oh yeah, okay. I don't know why I said BKB. Yeah, it, I, I think Kuroki did it once on his Wisp. And it was it made a lot of sense for that particular game, but generally I think Sange gives you more HP than a Vanguard does, and for a Wisp you just want to have as much HP as possible, so it makes sense. Yeah, and Burning getting kind of close to that BKB himself. They are going to be it on on this bottom tower. Looks like uh, DK or LGD not looking to trade. They're going to try to defend this as well, and that's what I'm talking about when LGD uh, Dota they take your tower and they save their own. Yep. Both teams trying to do that here, but LG getting the upper hand. Uh, and now here comes Silar, flacking away, taking all these uh, treants. Roshan, by the way, not really close to being back, so... I wonder what the LG gaming objective is right now. They did just take down the tier 2. I think whatever they're trying to do, they should do it uh, when the BKB is not up on the Tiny yet. Because that might change the team fight quite a bit. Yeah, Him being able to not take any damage from the magical side of things... Really makes things a lot easier, and I mean the fissure was what killed him last time, but if he's able to negate that, then he should be able to just go in and do damage. But do you think it's a little too late at this point for him? I I feel like it's late, uh, because even once he gets his uh, BKB, he's still not really too scary. I think it's once he gets the BKB and then the hyperstone, that's when he gets really scary. So I think he's still very far away from that. LG's got himself a ton of time. I just hope that they are using their time a little bit more efficiently. You see that. I mean, Earthshaker is just and jungling Shao away. Able to spot QQQ out. Is anybody close to him at all? No. Well, you do see the rotation coming out from DD as well as Silar. So, uh, QQQ thinks he's setting up a, uh, a bait. But uh, I, I think QQQ is about to go down. Do he's going to get gone on. He's, there's the track and the actually yep. uses a shuriken. But QQQ trying to TP out, but the bird's right there. Popping it and actually dungeon it. Oh. Why did he pop the BKB? Wait, why did he pop the BKB? <laughs> For a second there, I was like, oh, the DK birds. But they're... Yeah, it was maybe just a misclick. Maybe. Not sure that what that was about. Maybe they were thinking about Blink RP. That might be flying in their face. So just very preventative BKB usage, I guess. But okay. 12 to 15 is the score right now. This is the final and deciding game of the, the best of three series between the two teams. This is the semi-final of the Red Bull ECL. Winner goes home with 1,600... 1,600? Yeah, 1,600. And 16,000. I was like, was like 1,600. That seems a little low to me. Yeah, yeah. Third place gets like 1,600. Second place gets 32. But here yeah. comes the LGD. entire Yankee squad. Find MMY. Oh, they won MMY. Such an easy pickoff. That's the easiest track of his life. Shuriken Toss, where is it? He used it already. Uh, a little bit, unfortunately. Well, that's a free kill, and now I think they could transition to maybe a tier 3 siege. Don't yeah. think they could really get too much out of uh, anything. When else. you play Wiss like this, and you're playing like mainly defensively, and not able to get a whole lot out, then you're not utilizing the hero's full potential. Right. You have to be able to get like kills around the map, like spring traps using uh, like heroes without really like setting up for ganks, because you, know, you can just instantly pop out a hero. Yeah, right. although, like, it doesn't seem like it, I feel like Wisp is a very snowball support. You talked about the interaction of winning your early game, going deep into the map, and then placing more wards. Those wards will even set up more ganks in the future. That didn't really happen this game here. Xiao yeah. gonna pick up himself a Vlad, and I think LG has all the items they need to start going up high ground. Maybe take out the tier 2s first. Silar just gonna ulti up the top and push it out. He's got 3,300 gold now, and he does the most damage in this game by far. Unless, I mean, Burning was able to get like 50 hits off. Yeah, I mean, Burning... burning oh, he's gonna get on, gone on, and another, uh... These fissures, Jesus. Maybe that was what he wanted to do this time? Block him off? Yeah, that makes sense. But, uh... Those previous ones. Those were previous level fissures. They, they were previous level. I actually want to ask you on stream, because I never actually figured this one out. What does Bible Thump mean? It's that like crying face? Yeah, from Binding of Isaac. Okay. For anyone going to the International, me and uh, Merlini are going to wear some great theme shirts. Yeah. For like two of those days, so we'll look out for that. Feature some of your favorite Twitch stuff. Oh, relocate back up top right now. They do see, oh, Xiaowei by himself, and he just got completely gangbanged. 
in the jungle where gangbangs occur. Yeah, and uh, he's gonna blink go down up top here. ROTK going for some big plays. He does have the coil. He will drop it. Enchant totem. Any enchant totem. Facing orbs. That's two free kills. Well. Yeah, and DK finally showing some life. Yeah, I feel like DK could, again, do a lot more if they. LG's like clapping and trying to do like the soccer style chance. He's saying he wants DK to win. What a bad commentator. Yeah. Showing bias. I show no bias. Yeah. I want just a. Oh, and a mid, another pickoff for DK. Wow, LGD just uncharacteristically uh, giving it. Oh, one more hit. Oh. Wow, and DDC manages to get out of there. Gravekeeper cloak, OP. I not can't OP. believe he's alive right now. Yeah, he, he popped that magic stick. He does not us. deserve to live right there. Man, he's such a pro. He ran straight back home. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, but still, positionally, LGD not playing uh, the best. Yeah, I don't think they should play this kind of up and down pace because you you don't you don't win this kind of chasing back and forth. Not against a teleport, not against double bling, not against a wisp relocate. Just play group up Dota, push us three or four, push up us five, wait for the next Aegis, and play slow it down. Don't don't go crazy solo gank. Remember the gank happened over here with ROTK trying to one v four and died. Don't follow in L ROTK's footsteps. Follow in Burning Twister, who play is not the on their game. team. Yeah, play the safe, safe Dota. Yeah, but oh, Silar that was not ROTK. Playing... That was Xiao Eight pulling an ROTK. So don't do that, please. Silar playing uh this like really passive. I'm gonna farm game. Not really coming to fights right now. And a hex actually picked up on the Nature's Prophet. That's gonna be absolutely huge for them. Mm -hmm. And that's really what DK needed. And being able to get all those kills. I think that really definitely contributed to that. And yep. now LGD has to be a little bit careful. Without an Aegis on the field, you can definitely get bursted down before you uh, you pop your BKB. Right now, Burning Burning does have his own BKB, so he's definitely a force, uh, definitely a huge force at this point. Now, one thing is to still con con be a concern of is the fact that his attack speed is very low, and of course, you can't tether to a BKB unit. So MMY might have uh, some sort of annoying time. Hyper still now picked up though on Burning. Yeah, that's that's the item he needs and. With that pick up, I think you start setting up wards and challenge your Roche. The next Roshan fight is going to determine the game because that's where I think DK is going to have the best advantage of taking a fight when everybody's s sort of semi clumped up on LGD side where your RP, your Dream Call is going to be in big effects. And if you win those that fight, you could chase down for a lot more kills because you have uh, global side of ice, you have relocate and, and everything else. Nature's Prophet has Hanamidas that is not being used. Also, by the way, very, very good time to start saving for buybacks because. Team fight should be breaking out relatively soon. Yeah, and Silar playing it safe. I see him do this every time. He just goes for the satanic instead of another major damage item. Like this is his build. He does this every single game. Goes for um the butterfly or the BKB, the butterfly, and the satanic. No other damage item for him at this point. That's a good build though. It's it's well rounded. Oh, really? A super's actually going to be invis right now, and it looks like DK is going to be on the offensive right now. They have the BKB. They have a hyperstone on burning. Maybe they want to take the fight. Not particularly just yet. ROTK. Gonna be okay. Does ROTK have a gem? Yes, he does. Yeah, so blinking out there. Spots out Xiao 8 preemptively. And and another the, reset. Another what? Reset? Reset. Yeah, the Roshan is back up soon, as you can see the scouting being done here by Nature Prophet. So, who's gonna start making some plays here? This is where Split Push uh, reigns supreme, and having a Nature Prophet is best thing ever. RQQQ, please use your Midas. Please. Yeah, he's had that for such a long time. There you go. Like, it's been up. Yeah, where's Midas Reminder when I need him? I know, me too. Is but that the guy that I keep track yeah, of? Yeah, all he does is he watches yeah. streamers that get Midas and then bugs them about it. Yeah. Definitely was bugged about it. I missed, like, I think almost 3-4 minutes in one, one game. Yeah, the legendary Aghanims on uh, Visage that we rarely get to see. How's it's actually completed, because I never see it. It's not even that good. It's okay. It's pretty good. It's okay. Pretty you good, get an yeah. extra bird, but I'd rather be two thirds up to my side. But uh, it's all good. Silar and now yeah, working on that Roshan again. No challenge from DK. DK might be good at taking scrappy Roshan team fights, but heads up, maybe they don't kill, feel confident enough going into the pit. I thought they could have, because again, everybody clumped up in the pit, but. They're gonna just be comfortable with trading this T2 right now. I'm burning. Oh man, he pushes tower so quickly. 
If DK can win a fight, Burning can take Rax like in like 10 hits. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, let's see if DK could win that fight. Both teams avoiding each other. Roshan, of course, or Aegis, excuse me, went on Silar. Silar working for crits or working for MKB? Uh, MKB for sure, I'd imagine. Uh, he does have a TP right now. Walks by that. I think a Demon Edge right now would be more useful than a TP, especially if they decide to just push straight through and a ping comes out on uh, Shao 8. Because he's just going to start to run away again, realizing that maybe this isn't the best idea I've had. Haste. Yep, takes a haste and just gets the hell out of me. Yep, and Burning going to continue to farm, and this game has kind of just become a little more passive. Yeah. Which I don't mind. Yeah, DD is slowly getting close to his uh, Blink Dagger. I really like that patch change, by the way, which makes it easier to get level 11. It really helps heroes like Sand King or Earthshaker, you know, those ones that mm -hmm. their level 6 ultimate doesn't do, or their level 1 ultimate doesn't do quite well, but once they get level 2, it actually makes quite a difference in a fight. Yeah, it feels very different when you're playing, uh, and this is from my pub experience, but when you play things like Solo Midlion, Zeus, uh, definitely is a pretty big deal. Right? Okay, so DDD, DDD, DDC, Picks up his Aghanims on uh, Visage now. He's quite farmed, actually. LGD has all their items, and they have uh, so much HP and tank ability on this Dragon Knight. And Silar has so much farm as well. They have the Aegis. I think this is now the time to engage. Yeah, I think so. Well, I thought it was uh, the time to engage quite a bit ago, but the yeah, Scythe gets picked up now on Puck, so... Well, uh, he actually has... They have two Scythes. So DK is not completely out of this. If they can get those off before... The BKBs, and that's the big thing. If you get them after the BKBs where your team's already lost, then it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. But if I, you get them off before, that's where it's going to be huge. I almost want to say that I feel that DK is back on track now. I think they are actually ahead. Yeah, they definitely, maybe not ahead, but they're definitely on track again. Especially since um, LGD has so much counter-initiate too. So even if the hexes go off, as long as um, DD is in good position, he's going to be able to block it off and just kind of salvage the fight. And he's almost actually got his Blink Dagger. Has it in this fight. TPing back just in case anything happens and there's a Blink Dagger on an Earthshaker. Yeah, that's that's one, t you know. We saw how Blink Sanking was really, really effective. Earthshaker might be equally as, uh, as effective in terms of AoE crowd control after a Blink Dagger. Yes. A lot more real chain stun. And Silar's got 4.5k gold. I kind of wish he would sell these TPs, get a Demon Edge, and just kind of push with his team. But electing not to do so and just kind of passively farming once again. Yeah, I'm and not sure. And the Aegis goes down in three minutes. I think they should do something. And a five-man smoke gank is actually what they're going to go for. The Chinese are just generally way passive in the in this stage of the day. It's just like, don't really do It's anything. overly safe. It's overly safe, yeah. Yeah. But. One of the best things you can do against a CK Wisp team or a Wisp Piney team is to actually gank that lane because... Well, there's no you bring game. the fight to them. Yeah, and if actually, you... they're gonna go for this top gank because they want to push this tower at the same time. It's like, well, if we don't get the kill, we'll just get the tower up here. Well, at least the other people are still smoked in. Where, where's our? Oh. And super getting kind of close to um, his refresher orb. He's got 3,300 gold, so he's just about there. Is Tiny gonna barrel down this mid lane? Thank you for that shoulder rub. They'll keep keep light on the uh, just like rubbing lower and lower. <laughs> As LGD gonna push out this top tower. Are they actually gonna go on the high ground? That's the question here. As I think now th they have to. The Aegis gets reclaimed in two minutes. This is the time to do for it. Well, Silar's gonna push up here, and uh, he will. my eyes on super Looking for that blink RP. I think a blink skewer on Yao is where you want to start it with. When a Hex comes on Yao, is there any sort of follow-up? They're waiting for them to clump up, but no, a Hex is going to get wasted. Uh-oh. It was Yao. a nice attempt, though. You got to make that jump. BKB is going to get used, but he now gets, cancels the blink, and now Super can't go in. They're going to focus on the Rax. Yao doing a, such a good job zoning Super away. Without the RP, they just don't have a good setup initiation. Now he's looking for he's looking for a bot lane here as we do see a little bit of base trace situation. A super going for the racks as well. RP? Is it gonna be used? I heard Blink Dagger, no RP just yet. He just wants to cancel. Oh, okay, get the sun off. Dream Cold is gonna be used here to cancel that TP. We on the bot lane here. Burning still going to work. BKB gets popped. Silar now going to work as well. Keep in mind that call down deals slow slow through. Uh the BKB. Oh my god, is Yao gonna win this fight at top and no barely unable to? 100 HP, the uh, Magnus gets out with, and... I think MMY has uh, given Burning a, a trip back home, but 
a tier 3 tower tray for a tier 3 tower as well as a Rax. LGZ slightly come off ahead. Was it the correct decision for your half your team to kind of st slow down and defend and then push with Tiny Wisp? Or do you think they should have fought straight up? I think if um, that was the good idea. Because they realized in a straight 5 on 5 fight, especially with the Nagus, we probably can't fight this. And on top of that, I mean, if you can get a 5-man RP off, then everyone can instantly TP, right? With the Wisp and the Nature's Prophet. Right. So it's no issue right there. I think that was about as good of a trade as they were going to get. Well, hopefully they could get somewhat better trades. Uh, the RP not being dropped was such a big deal. If they dropped the RP, screwed them around a little bit, that would have been a lot more ton, uh, time being bought. Magnus? And there's his, uh, refresher there's finish. actually got the Refresher Orb now, yep. which is absolutely going to be huge. That's the big item you want to see on Magnus. After that, everything else is kind of, uh, you know, bonus. Yeah. I don't... Never seen actually a game where it wouldn't pass that point. It generally with double RP is... It's like Pretty the GG. much, yeah, it's like the on the top of the scale, right? Yeah. And actually, Yishaoi's farm is actually kind of really slowed down. He's just picked up a Yasha. I mean, we've seen that BKB Vlad's on him forever. Yeah, I feel like he needs to be jungling a little bit more, but he's... Instead of jungling, he's constantly scoping things out and checking for uh, oh my, enemies. Is that a completely that is completed a, data list? That is a daddy list. Is that, is that just a... Uh, no, he's got a full... Wow, I can't believe he's got that. And that's a lot of damage going to come on that tiny. You can't ignore him anymore. And any sort of uh, any sort of RP now at this point is going to mean huge things for DK. I actually really like that. Uh, going back on that though, ROTK's hex on Yao. I agree with that decision because most people, when they see their teammate get hex, they're like, "Oh, we have to protect him." Right. And then maybe you get one or two people out of position and you get a good RP off. I mean, at the same time, if it's a big boomer bus. Kind LGD, of play. LGD should have been like, yeah, you can focus on our DK. We'll let him to get hex. Yeah, right? that should exactly. Be so strong. it's one of those big boomer bus plays, but that's what ROTK is known for, right? Go big or go home, man. Did we really? We're so out of it right now. Did you guys not see that? No, I honestly. I did you loot me? This reminds me of one of the replay casts I did where, I think, seven minutes later, I panned over mid lane, I was like, what happened to the mid-rex? <laughs> oh my god. If LD hadn't mentioned it, I'm I so think tired right now, nobody would have realized it. I thought you knew. I no. LD actually walked over to us earlier, because me and Lumi both, like, just kind of, like, were out of it for, like, a full second and a half. Like, nobody was saying anything, and he's like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Well, something's wrong for LG China right now. I still think they're actually ahead in the fact that they, they are better in terms of heads of team fight, but maybe not good enough, not not a, enough better where they could actually base trade properly because DK base trading a lot better than uh, what we gave them credit for. We're the worst casters than me. We should disband. And then reband later when we get better. Re reband in bed? Reband in bed. We're okay. so tired, guys, but we're going to finish casting this game out as... Actually, LGD loses a Rax, and we didn't even realize after it. After he pointed that out, now I'm like fully awake. Like I took the quantum mathematics now. Quantum mathematics. Just the fucking game. You don't have to do any quantum mathematics. Trying to figure out what happened. There. I guess I'm burning just so much damage. Yeah. I guess they just like four shot the tower in the Rax. I was like, where did all that gold come from? I'm making sure that I'm not missing anything else. I'm just concentrating. Okay. The force. The caster hexagons. Wow. Well, I, which means I'm a boss. What? What an honor. What so, an honor. Actually, LGD is gonna five-man smoke gank right now. Do this again, and they're gonna look to go top. <laughs> I'm seeing. Wait, I'm seeing your. Uh, you can't. You know, cause I can see your yeah. view on the mini map, right? You just did the most amazing zigzag. Xiaowei is going to get Hex. Where's the RP? No RP just yet. Fisher's going to get blocked on the left side. RP whiffed, whiffed. I think he whiffed one of the RP yeah, just yet. And that Fisher just RP. zoned out everybody. Skewers back in. Where's the second RP? No RP just yet. Dragon, I guess, somewhat oh, found. He's so super confused just right so now. so confused right now. Mr. Confused is super. He's got to oh, drop the RP. Guy and he doesn't get anything. Oh, my goodness. He buys back, but one RP was wasted. He's going to TP and try again. This just kind of walked in a circle around him. Okay. That was not a super play.
That was so previous level. That was so previous level. DK now get a heart on top, so he's gonna be very tanky. I wanna say I'm very impressed with Yao's play. Like he is just on top of Magnus every time, preventing that blink RP. And now they're gonna go for Roche. I don't think you actually could make this play because of RP still being available. There's a relocate back up, so even if somebody dies, like tiny tiny dice. Yeah, they he have to do this now, and oh, the relocate's relocate gonna come in. Where's a glyph? Where's a glyph? Got a glyph hit, but I think even with five seconds, they they will still have enough. The, that Rax will still go down. No backdoor no, regen. No two. Thank you, one. Ice Frog. Remember the recent patch? Backdoor will now do less damage. Yep. And not able to get the Rax at all, and a free uh free Roshan actually. For a second, I was like, are they actually gonna contest this? But no, not able to contest this. And you know the refresher's down. Do you go for the fight here? I think so. LGD is going to barrel down this up? mid lane. Yeah, would we'll relocate down as well because you're, you're not going to get backdoored. So you definitely make that play. Yeah, this is the best time to go for it. I mean, Silar is about six stacked as it gets with that Aegis. And I think that just shows you how... Uh, I don't want to be nitpicky, but the fact that they didn't understood that they don't have enough damage to actually backdoor Rax just shows you that they haven't tried that before. And uh, that goes back to the inexperience with that particular hero. Because you would never make that play if you if you know you don't get the back throws. Burning, burning, gonna get burning down taken down. down really low. Even if he pops his BKB, oh. he's gonna be so low. But turns around and does damage. Oh, he's trying to do some damage, but the DK burning is just, oh my goodness. Super's in the corner. He's just kind of been like petrified. He's like, well, this game's kind of gone terribly for me at this point. Super is just time out by, by Yao. Yao is just, look at these fissures. Gonna my come god. In. Q -Q -Q is thinking about BK. Oh my goodness! That clumped on everybody, but the BKB has already and activated. Burning was thundering that. Yao manages to lock him down. And Yao is the most amazing DK, and now it's LGD China going yet to another finals. Yeah, and GG is called it's all on Yao. Managing to zone that Magnus in every fight, and when Mag finally lands like a four man RP. Imagine if Burning had hit him once or twice, and if he had gotten a crit, that would have been the game. Yep. But instead, Yao manages to isolate him out during that Magnus RP time. Beautiful plays by the most beautiful man in Dota. <laughs> and LD just kind of screaming no in the background. LD, could suck it. Because LG China, baby! What a team. LGD China versus... Versus Orange... That's going to be coming up. Oh my god, that best of five. I'm so... Yeah, good luck with that. Good thing I don't work for VTS. I'm going to bed after this. This is like a volunteer. Good thing you don't work. Good Just thing... Sleep. Dude, I... I was good for this one. I was the good one. I was the one carrying this cast. Lumi was like, half the time was like... <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those games, man, but... Okay. Alright, from the scale of one to missing racks, <laughs> how good was this game? It was amazing. How amazing was this game? Super, though, he played so brilliantly, but then I think at the end, he was just a little bit afraid to pull the trigger. Yes. It was one of those things where it's like, oh man, I messed up so you, bad You know there's two type of players. When you miss an RP, you were like, my second RP's gotta be so good to make up for the missed yeah. RP. I think Dendi's one of those type of players. That's yeah. why when he it, missed the he first RP, just rolls off of it. he just like falls off. Yeah. And then there's other players that miss an RP, be like, whatever, I miss an RP, let's go again. Yeah. I think Super did not have that. Yeah. He MVP was a little too tentative voice. after that. He was like, well, I cost my team the fight, and he really did. Yeah. And then he, and then the second RP, he immediately refreshes, and then, but again, nice block off by DD, making it unable for uh, Super to get you know the good kind of positioning mm -hmm. he wanted, but, and then Yao being able to isolate with that stun twice, and then. Yeah, catching burning, Yowzy, what a player! Yeah, Yowzy. Can we call him Yowzy? Yep. But that's uh, so. Judging by you've casted both the games right now, it's gonna be uh, LGD well, we versus sort of Orange. Cast so. <laughs> <laughs> there was something. That was something else. Yeah, we kind of just kind of stumbled through that game. Half that was some some like cast osmosis shit going on over there. So judging by what you've seen from both teams, who do you think has the advantage going into the finals? LGD China, for sure. Uh, historically, oh, is this the fight? Let's, uh, let's watch it one more time. <laughs> let's gonna watch it one more. Are we gonna? Is it actually gonna show? Uh, so you kind of goes down low, and then burning buys back immediately, and super's just kind of hiding in the corner. He's super afraid, haha. And then Yao just kind of runs past. 
when it actually like comes off. This fissure, my goodness. Yeah. But immediately after that, and then uh, Ooh. Ooh. And during this time, look at that stun. Not able to utilize that time at all. So, but judging by that, orange or LGD China? You said LGD China? LGD China. Okay. Well, I'm going to disagree by judging by what I saw and say I'm going to go with... You did not see game two <laughs> of Rising Snake versus Orange. There I think Orange else? has lost all of their fans after that game two. It was... It was something else? Yeah. All right. So, we're going to take a break, guys, until... I think it's the one-on-one -on -one tournament, right, coming up? Is there like a... Grand, grand Finals of the 1v1. The Grand Finals of the 1v1. And then after that, it'll be the actual Grand Finals. And then the third oh, place... That, no. Third, third place, place is, okay, then it'll be the third, fourth place decider match, and then we'll have the best of five grand finals. So stay tuned for that, guys. Sorry for the minor slip-up. Nobody up. ain't sorry. We love that, that mid-rex, that mid has gone, that didn't make, play any role. <laughs> so LGD victory. Ain't sorry. We got it, right? Well, I'm sorry, because I feel bad about that. Don't feel bad. I feel bad. That's your first.